Welcome to CATS Tutorials, and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 11.13. We're given this circuit, and we're told that this resistor here absorbs an average power of 240 watts, and that the current through that same resistor value of the impedance has no phase shift, which means you can quickly find, let's just, let's just do this before we check what the question is asking for. So to that this is the average power, so you can just use this formula quickly. Right, so average power, and we told that this is 60, we can have our RMS is equal to 240 divided by that, which is four, and square root of four is two. Okay, so the question is asking us to find the value of this voltage source as well as the complex power associated with each element. And finally, the total complex power associated with the circuit, the circuit which we have in front of us. So yeah, the overall complex power of the circuit. So that is what we're basically gonna find. So let's start by finding the value of this voltage source. How can we go about doing that? So let's start, let's start by, um, Let's start by combining these two impedances here. So we're going to start by combining the two impedances along the same line, right? So we have here, we have 30, you're going to combine these two. They're going to be 30 subtract J10. And here we're going to have 60 plus J20. So now that we have that, and we know that the current which is flowing through there is two amperes, we can actually proceed to find this value because after combining this, so let's combine this. Combining that section is gonna give us, um, so these two are in parallel, first of all, these two are in parallel. So the voltage across here is the same voltage across here, which is the same voltage across the parallel combination of these two. So we can find that voltage, which is across that point over there by saying V1, let's call it V1, which is the voltage across the parallel combination here. So V1, we can say V1 is equal to two multiplied by the impedance along that path, which is 60 plus J20. So V1 is equal to 120 plus J40 in volts. And to find the same value, we just basically assume that we did voltage division between the 20 and the parallel combination. So these two are in parallel. So after combining them, we just assume that we said V1 is equal to two. So we're gonna find that value after doing voltage division. So now we're gonna find the ZP, which is the impedance which results from combining these two in parallel. So now after finding these two, we know this value because we just calculated it from one of the lines. So we know this value, which is the voltage. We know that value and that value after saying ZP is equal to 30 subtract J10 parallel to 60 plus J20. So this is the parallel combination. I'm going to substitute it there and there. So that's there, right? There and there. So V is ultimately equals to, so this V is the voltage source, is equals to V1 multiplied by 20, plus ZP, which is the parallel combination, divided by ZP. And the value of the voltage source, which you should ultimately find for this question as the value of our voltage source is 240.67 with an angle of 21.45 degrees in volts. So that is the value of our voltage source, and that is the first part of the question. The next part of the question is asking us to find the complex power associated with each of the elements. So let's start with our, so here we have a 20 ohm resistor. So let's start with the complex power associated with that. So if you see here, this is, it has the total current flowing through it. And that total current, you can actually find it by adding the two currents which flow between 
these branches. So you know that two amperes flows there. So what is the current that actually flows here? Let's call it I1. What is the current that goes down there? So adding these two add up to the current which actually flows there. Or you can just say this voltage value which you just found over here divided by the sum of these two, you're going to get the same answer. So the total current is equal to I1 plus two. This I1 is the one that flows there. And we know that V1 actually flows here, and the V1 is the voltage which we found by multiplying 2 by the impedance along that line. So we're going to basically say that V1 divided by 30 subtract J10 is the value of our I1. And that is what we're going to have. And the value of that is 4 with an angle of 36. 0.87 degrees in amperes. That is your I1. So now the total current is therefore this value plus 2 amperes. So now to find the complex power associated with the 20 ohm resistor or impedance, you're actually going to say that the value of the current squared, which is using the formula IRMS squared multiply by the impedance, the impedance which has a complex and a real part. Now that this is only the real part, then we know for sure that this would actually have a value of I squared, which is the total, right? So adding these two up, you're basically going to have, after adding them, you're going to find a magnitude, and that magnitude should be 5.5. 727. So you're going to take the magnitude of the addition of this and 2. So this should be the magnitude of that squared. And you're going to multiply it by this, which is 20 over here. Right? And after doing that, you're basically going to have your complex power associated with this. That is going to be 656 volts amperes. Right? After that, we're going to move to the next element, which is basically this branch over here, which is an impedance of 30 subtract J10. So the complex power associated with that, you're going to find that to be the current which flows through there. The magnitude of that is 4. This is the current that flows through the 30 subtract J10. So 4, you're going to see 4 squared and then multiplied by 30 subtract J10. And the answer you should, which you should find for that complex power is 480 subtract J160 volt amperes. And moving on to the last element, which is the 60 plus J20. So we have two ohms flowing through that. So we're going to say 2 squared, and then going to multiply that by 60 plus J20. And we're going to have an answer of 240 plus J80 volt amperes. And now finally, we're going to compute the overall complex power associated with the circuit. So you find that by adding each of these. So after adding each of these, you should find a value of 1376 subtract J80 volt amperes. If you got this far, and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you like the video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If anything isn't clear, just leave a comment in the comment section.